True or false, the Laplace transform is an integral? True. True or false, the input of the, last, the Laplace transform is a function y of t and the output is a different function y of s? True. And true or false, the Laplace transform can be used to solve ODEs? True. Otherwise, we'd be wasting our time. <laughs> Okay, um, so today's lesson on the Laplace transform, if you remember some stuff from Calc 2, will be pretty easy, right? But we'll review everything that you need to know. Um, and then if we have a little time at the end, um, you guys can talk about your quizzes if you need to. And um, I did tell a couple of you last class that if you need until Monday for that quiz, I'm totally fine with that. You just won't get it back before the test. Right, so if you give it to me today, I can give it back to you Monday with feedback. But um, if you give it to me Monday, you won't get it before Wednesday. But on Monday after class, I'll post solutions. So if you want to hand it in later, I will still put up solutions. Okay, so this is our last day of material that will be on the test. Monday, we're just going to review for the test. So if you have any questions about the homework on this, we can talk about it Monday. Okay, so first we're just going to talk about the Laplace transform. So we're um, not going to solve any ODEs until later in the lecture. So the Laplace transform, once we get it um, and we can use it, then we'll put it um, into application to solving some ODEs. Okay, so the Laplace transform transforms one function into another function via an integral. So the Laplace transform is a function. Its input is a function and its output is a function. So this is the definition. It's just um, an indefinite integral, so you got to remember this from Calc 2, from 0 to infinity of whatever your input function y of t is times e to the negative st dt. All right, so let's find the, the Laplace transform if y of t is e to the 2t. So it's going to be the integral. Well, maybe I should write out the notation so we get used to it. The Laplace transform of e to the 2t is the integral from 0 to infinity. Replace the y of t in there with e to the 2t times e to the negative s t dt. And then e to the 2t times e to the negative s t, multiplying like bases, you can just add those exponents. So this is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the 2 minus s t dt, 2t minus st, and then I just factored out the t. All right, what is the antiderivative of e to some stuff? 1 over the stuff times e to the stuff, yeah. So you could do a, u, a formal u substitution, or you could just sort of think about undoing the chain rule. All right, so my antiderivative of e to the 2 minus s is 1 over 2 minus s times e to the 2 minus s t. And we have to take the bounds of integration are 0 to infinity, right? But plugging in infinity doesn't make any sense um, because infinity is not really a number. So we're going to, we have, I'm going to write it out with the correct notation here. If you don't always use the correct notation, I'm not going to take points off, but I just want to do it right when I'm doing it on the board. Okay. So um, instead of putting infinity there, because that doesn't make any sense, I'm going to write 1 over 2 minus s e to the 2 minus s t evaluated from 0 to some number b. And then you take the limit as b goes to infinity. That's what that means. So first I plug in b, then I plug in 0, and then I'm going to take the limit. So first, when I plug in a b, I get 1 over 2 minus s e to the 2 minus s times b. And when I plug in 0, I get 1 over 2 minus s times e to the 0, which is 
one, but I'll write it out. Okay, as B goes to infinity, now I have to, I just plugged in B and zero, subtracted them, and then now I'm going to take the limit. Look at that term. What happens as B goes to infinity? Yeah, yeah, it depends on S. Yeah, what 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 has to be true of S? Yep. Yeah. So this goes to zero if S is bigger than two, right? If it equals two, then it would go to then it, this would say e to the zero. Yeah, it would be undefined. Yeah, it would be undefined because two minus s would be zero, but b would be going to infinity. Yeah. So we'll just we'll just go to zero um, and we'll put the restriction that s has to be bigger than two. Um, and then this term, there's no b's in it, so this is just one over two minus s. So when I take the limit. I get 0 minus 1 over 2 minus s, which is 1 over s minus 2. Right? I just took that negative and changed the order of the denominator. And I have to put this little but if s is greater than 2. So this is a function. Right? This is a function, 1 over s minus 2. Its input is s. So I took a function, e to the 2t, plugged it into the Laplace transform, did a bunch of stuff, and I get a new function whose input is s, 1 over s minus 2. Okay. So an alternate notation for the Laplace transform is this curvy L looking thing. The Laplace transform of y of t equals y of s. So it says it takes a y of t. Any function as a ter in, in terms of t and gives you a new function in terms of s. So the Laplace transform of e to the 2t is 1 over s minus 2. All right, so let's just do the exact same thing, but we're going to use a generic a instead of a 2. Okay, so this is going to look really similar. So I'm going to do the Laplace transform of e to the a t. So that would be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the a t times e to the negative s t dt. So I just took the definition of the Laplace transform, replaced my y of t with e to the a t. It's the exact same process as before, I just have an a instead of a 2. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the a minus s t dt, take the antiderivative of that thing and you get 1 over a minus s times e to the a minus s t evaluated from 0 to infinity. And now I'm going to skip all the formal limit notation here and I'm just going to say if I were to plug in infinity here for t or something really, really big, right? The e term will go to zero if s is smaller than a. Sorry, bigger than a. If s is bigger than a, you'd have a negative exponent, and that term will go to zero. So my first term goes to zero. Okay, and then when I plug in zero, I get one over a minus s. Yeah. Yes. S has to be bigger than A. All right. And then this negative sign, I'm just going to use, and I'm just going to use it to change the order of the subtraction in the denominator. 1 over S minus A for S is bigger than A. So 
So you now can take the Laplace transform of e to the anything t. Yeah, Pat. <laughs> that's okay. All right, so that's how you take the Laplace transform. You don't have to do the integral out. Now, if I asked you, like, what is the integral, the Laplace transform of e to the 4t, you would say 1 over s minus 4, right? You can just use this formula now. So now a is 4, so this would just be 1 over s minus 4. No need to do the whole integral every time. All right, so now um, we're going to look at some properties of the Laplace transform. These are the properties that what that make the transform useful in solving differential equations. So the first one is the most important. Um, if you want to take the Laplace transform of a derivative, okay, given a function y of t, whose Laplace transform is the Laplace of y, um, the Laplace transform of dy dt is s times the Laplace of y minus y of 0. So I just want to verify this first. So the Laplace of y prime. So that is the integral from 0 to infinity of y prime times e to the negative st dt. Um, hang on, I actually can't remember. I <laughs> look at my notes. Yeah, because y prime is actually dy dt, and then the dt's cancel. I think. Oh. No, I'm going to use by parts. I'm going to use by parts. So I'm just plugging in dy dt instead of y into my definition. Yeah, this is a proof of the thing above. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to use, yeah, by parts. So I have to break this into, this is going to be my u. And then the dy dt and the dt together are going to be my v. Right, you choose a u and a and a dv. Sorry, u and dv. All right, so u is e to the negative st. dv is dy dt times dt, which is dy. I'll write it out. Okay, so then I need to figure out what is du. So that would be the derivative of e to the negative st, which is negative s e to the negative st dt. And if dv equals dy, then v equals y. And I take the integral of both sides. All right, so then we got to remember how to do the formula for by integration by parts. It says that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So I identified my u and my dv, and now I have a du and I have a v. So I just plug into my formula. Okay, so u times v, that's y e to the negative st, right? Because u is e to the negative st and v is y, minus the integral of v du. And v is y, and du is s e to the negative st dt. Uh, yeah. Thanks. All 
okay, so this looks like it's getting complicated, but we're actually almost done. So y e to the negative st, this is 0 to infinity, right? And this I have to evaluate from 0 to infinity, because that was my original integral, 0 to infinity. So y e to the negative st, if I try to put in infinity in for t, that exponent's going to be negative, just assuming that s is positive, right? So, so that just goes to 0. And if I put in a 0, y e to the 0 is y. And then over here, I can pull this, s is just a constant, so I can pull it out of the integral. And this is the definition of the Laplace transform. That is the Laplace transform of y. So what I've got is 0 minus y, which is negative y. of 0, right, because I plugged the 0 in there, plus s times the Laplace transform of y. I should have put a y of 0 there, because I was plugging in 0. Everybody remembers by parts really well, right? <laughs> okay. Um, don't worry about it. I mean, it's the proof of, of why you can use this, but using it is the important part, which we'll do in a minute. <laughs> then there are two other properties of the Laplace transform. If you want to take the Laplace transform of the sum of two functions, you can take the Laplace transform of the two set functions separately and add them together. And the Laplace of a constant times a function is the constant times the Laplace of the function. And those hold because those are well-known properties of integrals. And the Laplace transform is just an integral. OK, so finally, we can use the Laplace transform to solve a differential equation. So the idea is take the Laplace of both sides of the equation. So I'm going to take the Laplace of y prime. And that equals the Laplace, we did just solve that, the Laplace of y minus 4e to the negative t. Let's take the Laplace of both sides. All right, and the Laplace of y prime, we just proved, is negative y of 0 plus the Laplace of y. Yes, yes, so that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take... Um, the Laplace of y minus the Laplace of 4e to the negative t. I can actually pull that 4 out of the Laplace because it's just a constant. So this is the Laplace of y minus 4 times the Laplace of e to the negative t. And negative y of 0, I actually know y of 0. It was given to me as an initial condition. It's 1. Negative 1, yeah, because it's negative y of 0. Thank you. Oh, this needs an S on it, sorry. The formula for the Laplace of y prime was negative y of 0 plus S times the Laplace of y. All right, so the, I'm trying to solve for y, right? The whole idea in solving a differential equation is to come up with a function y of t that makes the equation true. I'm trying to get y. So I'm going to gather everything that has a y in it on the left and anything that doesn't have a y in it on the right. So I've got S times the Laplace of y minus the Laplace of y equals 1 minus 4 times the Laplace of e to the negative t.
Hmm? Yeah, now factor out a Laplace of y from the left side here. So I'm going to have a Laplace of y times s minus 1. And actually, the Laplace of e to the negative t we know, right? What is the Laplace of e to the negative t? Yep. We can just apply the formula we had for the Laplace of e to the at. All right, so then I'm going to try to, I'm going to isolate Laplace of y by dividing both sides by s minus 1. So the Laplace of y is going to be 1 over s minus 1 minus 4 over s plus 1 s minus 1. So I just had to divide both terms on the right hand side by s minus 1. This is a formula we talked about earlier in class. The Laplace of e to the a t is 1 over s minus a. This is, we derived this like 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, and I used for a negative 1. So s minus negative 1 is s plus 1. All right, uh, we okay with the algebra? Okay, so I need to find a function y whose Laplace transform is this thing on the right here. So I need to go backwards. Like we learned how to take the Laplace transform by doing an integral. Now I need to go backwards. So I need to take the inverse Laplace of both sides to get y by itself. So y my function, my answer, y of t, is going to be the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 1 minus 4 over s plus 1 s minus 1. Yeah, so you could figure, what is what function has as its Laplace transform 1 over s minus 1? Right, looking back at this formula over here, close, e to the t. e to the negative t was 1 over s plus 1. Right, I'm looking at this 1 over s minus 1 here. Its inverse Laplace transform would be e to the t. Okay, so I've got part of it. So the same rules for inverse Laplace um, apply as those, as those for Laplace. So I, I can take the inverse Laplace of those things separately. So this is e to the t minus the inverse Laplace of 4 over s plus 1, s minus 1. All right. This last inverse Laplace transform, it would be really easy if those were two separate fractions, something over s plus 1 plus something over s minus 1, because then I could just use that same rule I used on the first fraction, the 1 over s minus 1, right? Do we have a tool for taking a fraction like that and breaking it into two separate, the sum of two different fractions, one each with, of those two denominators? We do, we do. It's called partial fractions. Partial fractions from Calc 2. So I'm going to do it as a total aside, the partial fractions. I'm not going to put it in the work for my solving the equation. I'm just going to do it like over here on the right. So I want to break 4 over s plus 1, s minus 1, into two fractions, a over s plus 1 plus b over s minus 1. It look familiar now? Because if I can do that, it'll be really easy to take the Laplace, the inverse Laplace of each of those two fractions. Okay, so how do you do this? 
Yeah, you multiply both sides of that equation by the common denominator. Yeah. So multiply every term on both sides by s plus 1, s minus 1. All right, so on the left side, everything cancels. s plus 1, s minus 1 cancels with s plus 1, s minus 1, and I just have a 4. The first fraction on the right side, the s plus 1s cancel, so I'm left with a times s minus 1. And the second fraction, the s minus 1s cancel, so I'm left with b times s plus 1. Then I'm going to distribute, combine my combine my like terms. So think of this left side as 0s plus 4. And then I'm going to simplify the right side into something times s plus a constant. So I've got an as and a bs. So that's going to be a plus b s. And then I have negative a plus b. That's my constant term, negative a plus b then your coefficients have to be equal. In order for that equation that I just wrote to be true, the coefficients on s have to be the same and the constant terms have to be the same. So 0 has to equal a plus b, and 4 has to equal negative a plus b, and then you solve the system using whatever your favorite method is. a equals negative b, so 4 equals negative um, okay replace the a with a negative b so that's b plus b 2b equals 4 so b equals 2 and a equals negative 2 all right so come back over to my Laplace transform solving my differential equation, this becomes y of t equals e to the t minus the inverse Laplace of, and instead of 4 over s plus 1, s minus 1, I'm going to write it as negative 2 over s plus 1 plus 2 over s minus 1. I can take the inverse Laplace of those things separately, and I can pull the twos out. So that's going to become plus 2 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1. And then minus 2 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1. And then I can take the inverse Laplace of each of those using that e to the a t formula. What's the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1? e to the negative t. And then the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1 is e to the t. Combine your like terms. I have um, 2e to the negative t. And I have e to the t minus 2e to the t is minus e to the t. So it feels like a long process, but most of it isn't new. You're just going to have to remind yourself how to do it. The oh, there's way more complex ones. We're just not doing them today. Yeah. yeah. And not on test three. After test three, we're going to do three more days of Laplace transforms. Yeah. Is that the last thing before the class activities? Okay.